Alrighty, <laughs> this is going to be weird. Howdy neighbors and welcome to uh, Witches x Warlocks. This is supposed to be a dating game. And I have many concerns. <laughs> Go. Uh, maybe a wizard or a witch. Let me try. Let me try. Let me try. Let me go with this one. Uh, we'll do white, because why not? That one, because why not? Name. I guess her name is Faye. I'm gonna be Pacey. There we go. It's love, love, love! <laughs> God. No. It's love, love, love that makes the world go round, round, round. Another flawless night. Once again, love is triumphant. All thanks to weeks of dedicated hard work from yours truly, incomparable, the one and only Faye Nightshade. Da -dee da 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 da. It's love, love, love. Da -dee da. Tonight, two souls who had been searching their entire afterlives for each other have found one another at last. Tonight. Two hearts that used to be lonely are beating as one. All thanks to me. The best matchmaker in Dwemermere High. Hey, Nightshade, the one, the only. Da da da. Best matchmaker in. Oh, she just said it. Or they just said. What the hell is that? Dwemermere High. Da da da. The only one. <laughs> oh, he's gonna be a dick. I'm gonna go for him. Uh, this is supposed to be a dating game. I don't know if I said that, sorry. The only matchmaker in Dwemer Mir High. A blue skinned apparition steps out of the wall in front of me. <laughs> I jump back. There's a balance, I nearly fall over. What's the matter? What's the matter? You look like you've seen a ghost. I have. Oh, yeah. I would have never guessed. Apparition hovering a few inches above the pavement is Zero, my poltergeist classmate and childhood friend. I snigger at his obvious jab. He has quite the natural born talent for it. <laughs> You're looking as strict and frowny as ever, Zero. Mm -hmm. Where have you been? I was waiting all night. Smile for me! Why do you smile more often? It looks sweeter than candy corn when you smile. Candy corn's not even really all that sweet, though. Like Zero is not showing me that sweet smile of his tonight. Anyway, I have actually been busy with a very important errand. Yeah, right. You were just out matchmaking again. Of course. I was out matchmaking. Don't you know? When evil comes knocking, whether due to external forces or a certain summoning incident in the lab that we are not going to bring up for yet the hundredth time, Zero. I must do it! I must quell the beast by finding it's a one true love. After all, I am the one and only a fae nightshade. Da da da. Best matchmaker in Dwemer High. Again. Da da dummy. You're the only matchmaker in Dwemer High. Naturally! I'm so superb at matchmaking, no one dares to compete against wonderful me. God, we have just the worst ego, don't we? Zero brings his hands together slowly and horribly in one, two, three sarcastic claps. So? One may inquire if the one and only Faye Nightshade found any time between helping the undead find love and romancing evil spirits to study for their exams. Exams? Yes. Exams. Of course! No oh, exams! Of course, I have, silly. Yes! They are promptly bookmarked in my calendar. Well... I just haven't had any time to really buckle down and get a good witch's brewer and book spell. I will! Ha ha ha. <laughs> Look at his arms. Zero smirks at me the rather sardonic glint in his ruby eyes. Pray, tell me. When, pray, does the incomparable Faye Nightshade think their exams are? Huh? Isn't it Halloween? 
I'm sure I have much more time than you think. Wait. When do you think is Halloween? Well... Halloween is the most important day in the witch's calendar. However, these days I've been so busy with matchmaking as a certain evil spirit. Every day seemed like just another... just like any other. I cannot say for certain the last time I looked at my day calendar. But it can't have been that long ago. Maybe... Halloween is in two months, maybe three, maybe four. Halloween is next week. <laughs> We're fucked. We are fucked. What? <laughs> I don't know which is more terrifying, the way Zero is glowering or what he just shouted. No way! Next week? Yes. Next week. Really? Halloween. I cannot believe. Yes, Faye, I cannot believe you forgot your exams, much less Halloween. What? Zero, a lot has happened since the start of the semester. You know my memory has a tendency to be fickle. Don't you know? In the first week, I almost got tangled up in a mistaken identity crisis with the corpse's bride. Thankfully. Thankfully, he was understanding once I matched him up with the undead body of his dreams. And then... Not long after that, an evil spirit... An evil spirit teen tried to banish me for getting his mom a hot date. And then... Once I mentioned the certain summoning incident in the lab, that is still not up for discussion. Zero sighs with an exaggerated shake of his head. It isn't. Your memory isn't bad, it's selective. I throw my, up my hands and surrender at his comments. Nothing I said was going to break down his wall when he gets like this. I don't know. I don't even know what the exams are about. <laughs> what the fuck? So... The exams are a series of magical obstacle courses. You need to use the magic spells you were supposed to have learned this year to- Oh! You mean... Spells? Oh, you mean like the glow spell? Yes. I remember! I remember Miss Magwitch cast a glow in her first class. The demonstration was absolutely dazzling. Yes. About the exams. Yeah! Maybe I can cast it too. And dazzled the examiners into passing me. And wonderful match. The wonderful matchmaker of Dormir High. Yeah. Zero is so sick of her shit. Let me try. How does she do it? Let me try. Glow! I have my hands grandly. The way I remember Miss Magwitch doing. Glow! Light, come on, glow. Not a glimmer. Why? Zero, care to give me a hint as to why I can't ca cast glow? Because. Because you're a witch. Only true sorcerers can catch spells purely by magic. Just like you must use potions to cast spells. Oh. Why am I so fucking stupid? Shouldn't I know this? I cannot believe. This is basic knowledge. Have you slept through classes the whole semester? A sheepish grin is pushing my face before I could stop it. <laughs> Maybe I was saying it pretty late. God, I'm a fucking moron! May I remind you? Zero, please be mad, yeah. Unless you said it properly, from now on you're going to fail your exams, be expelled from being a witch who can't cast one single spell. Really? Well, they really expel me. It's because I can't cast a single spell. Yes. Zero looks at me with a in that horrible way again. Think about it. You'd be the only, the one and only witch in the entire history of Dwemer High to be unable to cast even a single spell. Being expelled is far from far-fetched. Think about that for a moment. Hmm. Help me! Zero, help me. Teach me how to spell, oh, teach me to be a spell-casting witch. Let me think. Let me think about it. Nope. May I remind you? Every night for the last three months, between all the ghouling around and excessive matchmaking, I kept warning you to prepare for exams. But did you ever listen? What? Zero. You tried to listen to everything while being excessively haunted by an evil spirit. You said so. You said the spirit summoning incident was not up for discussion. Did you? So did you ever listen to me? Ew, this is disgusting, so <laughs> I, I don't, I don't talk about that. I guess not. I guess not. I guess not. 
You're hopeless. You're hopeless, Faye. Don't even think you can get me to bail you out of this time. This bus really is all my fault, huh? That's right. That's right, and I'm not fixing it for you. Now let my shoulders drop. Or droop, sorry. I can't read. I understand. After all, I've done so much already. I'll work hard! I'm gonna study really hard, harder than ever before. These next seven days. And then... And, if it still isn't enough, and we never see each other again after I'm spilled next week, then I'll miss you, Zero, my dear, dearest friend. Give Zero a sad little smile, then it turned to limp tragically away. Three, two, one. Wait. Oh. Zero. I guess. I guess I have no choice but to help you once more. But don't count on it happening again. Thank you! Really, you will? Thanks, Zero. I spin exuberantly, celebrating my little victory. I throw my arms around him. I slip through him as usual. Hey! Hey, quit it. It'll take me ages to reform myself if I get disintegrated so close to dawn. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so happy I can help it. You're the best, Zero. Stop. I said stop. There isn't much time before daybreak, and you'll need all the help you can get. Pay attention. I pay attention. I'm only going to explain spellcasting and potions for witches just this once. I'm going to forget immediately. Hmm. It is divided into three segments, early dawn, crimson dusk, and witching hour. Okay. You can pick an activity to spend your time with during each time segment in the activity menu. So you can learn spells, get a part-time job, make potions, or buy potions. Okay. Make potions, learn spells, and part-time job will advance your time to the next segment. But buying them doesn't. Ah, dawn uh, is coming. Oh. Ah, uh, dawn is coming. What's the matter? Hmm. He looks so ephemeral and fragile now. Just the slightest wind could whisk you away. Because? It's because the sun is nearly up. That's how it is. That's how it is for poltergeists like me. Doomed for life to only walk the night. Thank you! Thank you for helping me tonight and, well, for everything. Work hard and do your best. I, for one, would prefer if you didn't get yourself expelled, if that makes a difference. If it wasn't for how transparent he has become, I would almost swear his cheeks had a tin were a tinge brighter than before. Silently smiling his elusive sweet smile, Zero fades away with the onset of day. I will! I will, Zero, I promise. I work hard, pass the Halloween exam, and make you proud of me. I will, I swear it. The windows of my house are brightly lit. When I shut the door, it swings inward with ease. Which means... Damien! Damien, I'm home. Who the fuck is Damien? Welcome home. That's Damien. You're, miss you're missing some skin there, buddy. Welcome home. Here my housemate Damien shuffling down the staircase, welcoming me with a shy smile. Help me! Help me. Huh? Tonight didn't go well. Yeah? The worst, tonight was just dreadful. Um... I don't know I could try, but I don't know if I... You see? See, matchmaking isn't my forte, and uh, you'll... Never need any help before, so... No! Not matchmaking. Of course, they don't need any help with matchmaking. The best matchmaker in Dwemermere High! I'm the best matchmaker in Dwemermere High, and I intend to keep it that way. Uh, then. Whoa! Studying, studying. I give myself a fright thinking about the possibility that I might be expelled from school. Don't you know? Don't you know that exams are on Halloween, which happens to be next week? Of course! Of course I do. Everyone does. Hold on. Wait. Faye. Don't tell me you just found out. I look at them teary-eyed. Phew. Oh no. This isn't the most opportune moment to ask, as Damien must be busy with their own studies too. But 
I gave Zero a promise, and I intend to do everything I can to keep it. And studying together is more fun anyway. Damien! Damien, the most dependable and studious friend I have, you're my only hope. He asked me, it looks both embarrassed yet happy at the same time. And that's when I knew I had them exactly where I wanted them. I hate our character. <laughs> they are so annoying. <laughs> Fuck. Really? I am. Damien, don't fall for this bullshit. You see. If I crammed these books all by myself, I'd probably end up setting them on fire. And catch myself on fire and die miserably. Please? You ought to save me from my ultimate demise, please. Damien hesitates, but only for a second before nodding. Just as so I knew they would. I'll try. I'll try to do whatever I can to help you. Thank you! Thank you so, so much! Hate our character. That moment was noticed, I flung my arms around them in a big, cheerful hug. Be careful! Careful, I'm not finished assembling the parts. I jump at once. Careful not to bump off a limb or two. Alright! You're already doing maintenance again. Yes. Yeah, my previous arms were falling off, and one of the knees started creaking. I had to buy new parts from the human shop. Good price. <laughs> Any good bargains lately? I can't let Mr. Rest, Mr. West, rip you off. You're their number one customer, after all. They gave. Oh, they gave me a small, humorous smile. Yes. Yeah, the human shop has an influx of parts that they're selling for cheap because, well, a big pile of human corpses was recently uncovered. So Mr. West says. What? That Mr. West sure is a shady. Sure is a bit shady, isn't he? Maybe. Maybe, but the human parts he sells there are fresh and cheap, just like his potions. Right. Potions. Set my fingers with both hands, as. Uh, as the next step of my master plan for passing the exam falls into place in my head. I remember! Never mind, I should go to the human shop and buy potions. I'm all out and I can't cast spells without them. Alright. That's a good idea, Faye, but are you sure you can afford it? Why? Whatever do you mean. Um... But you're kind of broke. Oh! You're right. You already spent all your allowance on hosting matchmaking parties, right? Yes! Yep, that evil spirit only wanted the most fancy stuffs. Er, yes, yeah, stuffs, and wouldn't give me a rest until I complied. How? Wait, how do you know that? Well... Because yesterday I had to borrow money from me for lunch. A little extra for a light snack. I forgot. Ooh, it's bad, really bad. If I don't learn enough spells to pass the Halloween exam, it won't do me a lick of good if... I don't have the potions I need to cast them. If there's no way I have enough time to concoct all the potions I will need while cramming spells simultaneously. Ask me another. Um... Hey, listen, I have an idea. Yeah! Tell me. Maybe. If you need to earn money to buy potions, maybe you can try asking Mr. West at the human shop for a part-time job. How? Are they hiring? Exactly. I hear Mr. West needs more hands. That are attached to living bodies, I mean to help out because there's a large uh what is that word again <laughs> no Consi consignment of corpses in the shop received um and with everyone busy studying i think they'll have a good shot at getting the job there if you want to that is perfect perfect i'll head there at once wait after you wake up tomorrow Sudden shift in tone it took me by took me by surprise to say the least. They put on a good party face. What? But no. Go to bed, Faye. You're really exhausted and you need rest. What? I'm serious. No. You see. If you won't go to bed now, I'm not gonna help you. Wow! Wow, this is just surprisingly a sort of threat coming from you. Um I do what I need to. Alright! All right, all right. I know you mean the best for me. Yes! I'm heading to bed now, my liege. He takes an exaggerated bow. Damien laughs softly, but doesn't leave their spot until I go on all the way up the stairs and into my bedroom. Hey, 
Ruby Damon's right. I'm way too sleepy now to be applying for part-time jobs. If I actually want to end up getting hired. My bed looks so soft and warm and inviting. My eyelids are... Suddenly feel like a ton of bricks. Tomorrow. I'll work really, really hard tomorrow. Darkness takes me gently into its sweet embrace. <laughs> Eight hours of uninterrupted beauty sleep is the most magical spell in the world. Went to bed last night, feeling like a lobotomized zombie with a head stuffed full of decomposing brain matter. This morning I switched my arms fully uh, resurrected as a lively and youthful matchmaking genius. The incomparable, the one and only, Faye Nightshade. I sing hauntingly as I bounce down the stairs. Good morning, Faye. You look energetic. Yeah. I am energetic, that's why. I feel like I can take on anyone and anything. Excellent. You Mr. West in the human shop? Um, um. Aren't you applying for the job at the human shop today? Well, since you're broke and need money to buy potions, which you need to cast spells, which you need to pass the exam on Halloween. Oh! No wonder I'm in a good mood. I forgot. I forgot all about exams and potions and casting spells and being broke. Now I remember. I count each little terrible to-do list item on my fingers, and my cheery good mood evaporates like a fine mist in the morning sun. See you later! I'm late, I have to hurry. See you later, Damon. Yes. Good luck. Here, Damon calls softly behind me as I dash out of the house. Alright! Good luck. Yeah, I'm gonna need it. Ding, ding, ding! Progresso. The cracked antique bell chimes eerily as I push open the creaky old door of the human shop. The shop is empty and silent as an open grave. Which means it isn't open yet, probably. No returns. <laughs> Looks like I made it just in time. Hello? Oh my. Oh my. My, my, my. What do we have here? A cutie has appeared into my parlor. Carmia. Behind the shop counter stands a little girl. She turned on the edge of her palm. She's eyeing me up. Oh, she was eyeing me up as a spider would a particularly delectable fly. Herbie! Herbie, today's produce just arrived, and it's still fresh, being alive and all. The voice echoed lightly through the shop. From somewhere upstairs, an unseen voice hollers back. I'm busy, Carmia. Put it yourself. Watch her. No way! Wait, I'm not produce. Mm-hmm. Really? She tilts her head pointedly to the side, which obviously, with an obviously dubious regard. But. Are you quite certain? You look like produce to me. No! I am no mere human. The incomparable! The one and only! God, Faye, I need you to stop. <laughs> Behold in your company the incomparable, the one and only Faye Nightshade. Nightshade, huh? So you're a witch? Yeah! You know it. Mm. Then why haven't I seen you in school before? You go to school too? Um. You go to Dormammu High too? Huh? If you're a student there, then would you would know that without even asking. Hmm. Strange. I feel like I've invited everyone to my matchmaking parties at least once. Oh. Matchmaking? Oh, so you're that Nigel. A charming girl straightens up and dazzles me with her professional sunny smile. Welcome. Hello there. My name is Carmia. How may I assist you today? See, I'm looking for a job. Huh? Now. If you're a witch, you should know. Oh, for you should have exams. Time. Right now. The last time I'm a witch. Well. I know I have exams this week, but I'm kind of really broke. Mm. This gaudy matchmaking soirees must cost cost a pretty penny. Yes. Yes, which means I can't afford to buy potions. Which means you can't cast spells. Whoa! Which means I won't be able to pass the exam, even if I know how to cast spells. Huh? Even if. Um. Even though. Oh. Which means. Watch her swiftly calculate my unfortunate circumstance. And so. 
would be the first witch to ever be expelled from Dwarmere High for not being able to cast a single spell. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, exactly what I don't want to be. Now. Unless I understand your trials and tribulations, I can't help you. Why? You know? You see, Mr. West, the proprietor of the human shop, already has someone run the store for him. And you're looking right at her. What? But I need the money. Yes? Who doesn't? At this point, I'm a tad desperate and blurt out the first idea that comes to mind. Maybe. Can we work for you? Mm-hmm. For me? With her eyebrows raised in an in interest. Yes! Yeah, someone as talented and clever as you shouldn't be working for others. You should have others work for you instead. Wait. You're the manager? You see. I'm not simply a manager. Think bigger. Supervisor. Director. Visionary leader. You're right. True. I do belong to an ancient and distinguished noble family. Yes. The common people must serve me, not the other way around. Yeah. And I can't believe the proprietor is making a girl as beautiful as you stand behind a camera all day. Right. Right? I'm wasting away behind this silly table, aren't I? Naturally. Definitely. You see. With your brains and your looks, if the proprietor has you out and about charming the customers, I bet the turnover for the human shop will increase tenfold. Huh? Only tenfold? Of course! A hundredfold. I like it! You make many excellent points. I like the way you think. Yeah! See, I'd be quite useful to have working for you. Please? Put a word for me to the proprietor, please. Mm-hmm. I'll try. No guarantees. She winks. Herbie! Herbie, today's produce wants to work for me and I like them. Can they? Work for you. Hmm. Please. Gosh. Your voice is suddenly so sugary sweet that I feel like a diabetic going into something I did not read. <sighs> alright. And so? That means that you have to pay them salary and all. Oh, alright. Mm -hmm. That means you also have to give me a raise. Excuse me? Yes. Because I'm a supervisor now, aren't I? Can't be the same as them. Alright. Carmia turns back to me. Her hair bouncing lightly against her shoulders, she clasps her hands together dramatically. Congratulations! Congratulations on your new job. Amazing! Amazing? Was it magic? Of course! Of course it is. Empiric magic, to put it simply. My very own brand. A devious little notion strikes me. How? How did you become so incredibly good at it? Practice! Oh, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect, you know? Practice does not make perfect. That is a bold-faced lie. I'm sure! You're being way too modest, I'm sure. She presses her lips against the bag of her index finger. Maybe. Maybe I am. Can you teach me? I can't. I am. I have triggered. That's it. You just had to be a witch like you. Of course. Of course I can. If I want to. I don't want to learn it anyway. Well. I think it might be useful for asking the proprietor for a raise. Yes. I mean, for the sake of my Halloween exams. Carmilla! Oh, it's Carmilla? Whoops. <laughs> we are so grateful. Carmilla. Nah, Carmia. After all, you're the only vampire in this world who is, the, who is intelligent enough to teach me magic in just a week, please. She considers me thoughtfully, tapping the tip of her chin before pausing to give me her final verdict. Oh, all right. It could be, oh, it could be you may have a talent for it too. We shall see. Every day, your character will work part-time and earn money. While working part-time, some events may occur that can be solved by using the right magic spell. Solving these events will earn you an extra amount of money. By choosing part-time job from the activity window, you can work an extra shift. Oh, so either way I'm gonna do it. Cool. <laughs> Little Witch Fay, da di da the one and only, la la la. Today I found out that the proprietor of the human shop is incredibly shady, and his storekeeper is sweet-talking vampire. Yeah! I also got a job so I could buy potions, and a new friend to teach me... Mm, riveting vampiric magic. Yeah! I put my fist in the air, cheering at the sign of my imminent victory. <laughs> the Halloween exams are going to be a piece of pumpkin pie. Um... Mm. Suspicious noises are coming from... A dingy back alley behind the human yeah. shop. What's going on? <laughs> what the fuck? Seriously, I peek into the decrepit alley. 
mountain of reanimated corpses and body bags on its way to the human shop. In the upper floor of the shop comes the sound of metal and glass crashing onto the floor. What did you say? Not again. Don't you worry. Don't worry, Herbie. It's only the delivery for today's produce. She giggles while giving me a twinkling glance. Then Carmia Car turns her attention to the hideous monstrosity that just made its way to the door. Now. We're at the doorstep as per usual, Lawrence. All right. Hey. Around a body bag halts and plunks under the ground. The person hauling them straightens up and dusts up his hands. It's a cat boy. It is a cat boy. <laughs> He's probably a werewolf. A what? Wow! How cute a real life cat boy. I've never seen one up close before, despite being a witch. All right. So 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 many cats, but no cat boys. Plus, you must be a really strong cat boy to carry Stop. all those. And I I keep pressing without thinking. First of all, I'm not a cat. Second of all, I have a name. <laughs> Player pause and say, yeah, catboy. I have a loosely held fist in the air at him. He puts both his hands on his hips and drops his head before letting out a long sigh. Uh. Evidently, my frightening appearance has unhinged your wits with stark terror. No way! No way, you don't look frightful at all. Can I give you a fluffy ears a pet? Or after I bite your hand off. Wow! Such a feisty cat boy. I'm a werewolf! <laughs> <laughs> the pouty I'm a werewolf is what's killing me. Again, not a cat boy. <laughs> the fuck is this game? <laughs> werewolf where? Of course. Right here. He puts the tip of his index finger against his cheek. Um. You? Yeah. Yeah, a werewolf, a lichen, a. Hmm. Luke Garo, me. What? But werewolves are all scary and stuff. Hmm. Precisely. At last, you can see the point. What? But you're not scary at all. You're adorable. Wow! Wow, we you're growling again. And look like you want to bite someone's hand off. Because. Because I do. You're done infuriating me. I will take my leave. With unutterable dig dignity, the cat boy, the werewolf, strides past me, chin up, and ears bristled. Mm. How strange. Begin to inquisitively stroke my chin. What? Stop Smith's tread. Not being called that. Um. Um. You don't like it when someone calls you cute or adorable, do you? The werewolf begins to rub the sides of his head in a circular fashion. Hmm. <laughs> so kind of you to finally put the pieces together. No, in fact, it makes my temples throb in vicious fury. <laughs> Sorry, I'll remember not to in the future. Probably. Good. Very good. Hold it. <laughs> Hang on, in the future? Yes! For sure! Why? Respect, for reasons apparent only to yourself, we shall have cause for further association. Yeah! Yeah, I want us to become friends. It's not every day I get to meet a werewolf as cute and, ad I mean, as scary and intimidating as you. Alright, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, but just this once. Well... Your name is Lawrence, right? That's what, um, Cam Carmia called you earlier. Yeah. Indeed. You have the advantage of me. Right. What? No, oh, my name's Faye. Faye Nightshade. The one, the only. I know. Yes, yes, I know. Of course! You know? You know. Yes, of course you know. Hmm. I don't want your services, mind you. I already have too many admirers inquiring after me for a chance to scratch my chin or ruffle my ears. All right! Don't worry. I won't try to set you up with anyone. Good. Yes! I'll only try to make you teach me magic spells and potions. Lawrence was starting to nod when he flung his head up in his prize. How? <laughs> Let me get this straight. You, a witch, are asking me, a werewolf, to teach you how to brew potions. Right! That's right. Fine. You see, it's not my hearing that's a faulty, but your intelligence. Well... Well, sometimes I do wish I 
Went to class occasionally. But... What can a werewolf like me teach you? Even to a trot witch like yourself. Hmm. You're a werewolf, right? That means you're very strong. Yeah. This is true. And then... I have superhuman senses. And look at... Sorry, scary and intimidating all the time. Hmm. Correct again. Right. And he's just full of potions that will let me be like you. Yes! I bet being strong and scary with superhuman senses can help me pass my Halloween exams. Put my hands together and shake them up at him in a pleading fashion. Inspiration seems to be an unfortunate, reoccurring theme for me lately. Hmm. It is possible I could do that. It may even be possible you might be able to learn a thing or two if I do. Yeah! Hip hip hooray. But... But that doesn't mean I'm going to. Why? Why not? Now... What could you possibly offer to make it worth my while? Um... My undying friendship? No. Don't need. Um... My eternal gratitude? Hmm. Useless. Um... A premium 24-7 matchmaking service? Whoa. Good grief, no. What would you like? Hmm. Meat. Lots and lots of meat. He stretches his arms and folds them behind his head. You know. What meat means less time hauling corpses, and I, for one, would welcome the break to do something as simple as teach a few spells. All right! Meat in exchange for teaching me spells, huh? Okay. All the meat you can eat for as long as we both shall live. Hmm. You swear? Yes! Pinky promise. For a moment, Lawrence stands there still and silent. Obviously awed by the generosity from the one and only Faye Nightshade. All right. All right, I accept your offer. Yeah. Yay. I return home, tired and footsore, but very, very happy. Damien! I'm back. Welcome home. My housemate hurries to greet me. Looking a lot... Uh, what is that? Springlier? And they did this morning. Well... You're doing maintenance already? Yes. Yes. You're up for a rather long time, and I well, was getting a bit worried. Did everything go well? Yes! Everything went fantastically. I got a job and made two new friends. Congratulations. <laughs> well, thanks to your idea, Damien. Right! Now I'll have money for potions and four people to help me prepare for my exams. A slight blush dawns on their stitch face. I'm glad. I'm glad for you, Faye. Tell me, what are your plans for the rest of today? What am I gonna do? I have no money. Uh, oh, I have things for require. I have to have spells in order to learn things? Hello there, how can I assist you? Which is blue? Oh, it's just a couple points. Leave. I need to. Today I went to work. Anything special happened. And I earned a good amount of pocket money. Okay. Um, let's do telekinesis first. Let's do telekinesis. We'll do one blue. Purchase. I think then we're just gonna do the blue right now. Telekinesis, go. Mm -hmm. Clean, clean, clean the house. Fay nightshade, the neat, the tidy. I'm sorry. I have to apologize, Fay. I always thought. I always thought you were thoughtless. Bumbling, devil make hair, airhead slob. Zero! Zero, zero. One adjective at a time, please. But. But it seems like maybe deep down you're actually a responsible person. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yes, praise me some more. Maybe. Very, very deep down. Carefully, I climb the ladder, a pail of cleaning equipment in my hand. How? How is Damien Angel so badly? So they were trying to clean the top shelf of the cupboard. But while on the ladder, one of their joints gave out suddenly. Ouch. Yeah. I sigh. It's rare for that to happen to Damien. They're not even a klutz, so I 
So I'm pretty worried. Oh, now? Say. Don't worry. I'm sure Damien will come home in tip top shape after their surgery at the human shop. Right. So am I. And then. And I want to give Damien a big surprise. When they get back and find this place all spick and span. There's not even a single crumb of newt to be found. Are you sure? I think that's very kind of you. Only are you sure you'll be fine? Um, what do you mean? May I remind you? You're barely keeping your balance on top of that rickety ladder. Holding a mop in one hand and a pail of sloppy water in the other. Well? A series of tasks that would challenge even a trained acrobat. Right! I am? I am! Amazing! Amazingly talented, aren't I? Don't. Don't accidentally uh, trip and fall too, Faye. <laughs> You're such a worry, Ward Zero. I tiptoe to the uppermost rung, straining to reach the corner of the cupboard to shelf with my mop. The incomparable! The one and only! No accident could possibly happen to Faye Nightshade, the one the only. <laughs> Cockroach! <laughs> Careful! I flinch away from the creepy crawly and simultaneously lose my balance. <laughs> one dizzying moment, I'm in freefall. An unforeseen force catches me midair. Huh? I'm floating? Buoyed up in midair by an invisible wave. As I are oh, as are my mob and pale on either side of me. Slowly the forest ebbs away, settling me and my mop and pale gently on the floor. My brain rattles inside my skull as I recover from the fall. Well What happened? Thank goodness. Thank goodness I caught you in time. You scared me to death. <laughs> but Zero, you're a poltergeist. Uh. Unless you want to turn into one, don't even do something so Wait. Wait, that's it. I'm an idiot. I should have told you telekinesis. Fucking <laughs> Faye. Teleco what? That's right. It's a poltergeist spell that allows you to move physical objects about. Like slamming books in empty rooms. Breaking plates. Plunging... Uh... What is it? Plunging cosmetic boxes into ponds. Um... You're catching witches falling from ladders? Precisely. Or controlling a mop and pail into cleaning the cupboard without you need to hold them yourself. Can you teach me? Well, that sounds useful. Teach me, Zero. Pay attention. Alright, prepare yourself, Faye. I'm gonna teach you how to cast telekinesis. New spell acquired! Telekinesis! Telekinesis. Inch by inch, the mop and pail rise out of the ground like zombies in the grave. Dip the mop into the pail, take the mop out. Well done. Not bad. Da -dee da. Wipe, wipe, wipe the mop on the shelf, shelf, shelf. But. The spell such as telekinesis, concentration is absolutely key. Uh. That's strange. There is a round button like thing. Mm -hmm. You lose it. Huh? It's moving, it's moving. Uh. The spell breaks. Ah! Ah, cockroach, it flies. Zero's flying. Mob and pale drop as a small brown creature whirs through the room before propelling up and out of the open window. Telekinesis! He catches the mop right before it lands on my head. The look of relief crosses his face briefly. Huh. Telekinesis isn't the easiest spell to catch, especially when you're casting it for the first time. Um. Being five full of, of flying cockroaches. Well? That too. When you've quite recovered, shall we try again? After an hour, under Zero's tutelage, there's telekinesis to clean. Not just the cupboard, but every nook and cranny of the house. Yes! Hey, when Damien returns. Um, I'm home. Yeah! We're back! I... Can I stay? I'd like to see the look of surprise on their face. Of course! Of course. Thank you for all your help, Zero. Apologies. Sorry I caused a mess in the kitchen earlier due to my accident. I'm gonna clean it up right away, don't worry. Oh! Hey, and Zero. What are you- and why's the kitchen- oh. Today I went to work. Nothing special happened I learned- I earned a good amount of money. Zero! Zero, guess what? What? Come on! Guess! Fine. Neither you nor I have time for it. Fine, I'll guess. Yes! Squints at me. Mmm. Spectically? Did you? Did you just sit the kitchen on fire again, making scrambled eggs? Huh? Well? Did you? No! 
Mm -hmm. I see. And I suppose you must have caused an explosion akin to you put the wrong ingredient in your potion and burned down your flat. No way! I didn't, jeez. Don't tell me. Don't tell me you accidentally summoned a 36 armed tentacle demon again while trying to practice spells. No, no, no! In that case. In that case, I'm surely out of possible ideas. With much enthusiasm, I whip out a peace sign and angle it stylishly against my face. Right! I'm ready to learn the glow spell. May I remind you? Might I remind you that a glow spell is the very first spell that Estella taught you from the start of the year? Yes! Uh huh, that's the one. Let's do it. Uh. Looks like it only took you nine months to be ready to learn it. Excellent progress, Faye. At this rate, you'll pass the Halloween exams with flying colors. <laughs> you think so too, huh? The incomparable. The one and only. Oh my god. I. I. Fuck this character. Okay. <laughs> it's quite natural that you find yourself speechless in front of the witch as brilliant as the one and only Fate Nightshade. I admit it. I admit you often reduce me to speechlessness. What? But I need you to teach you this, this spell at some point, you know? That's right. You're right. We don't have time for sarcastic banter with each other. Pay attention. Prepare yourself, Faye. I'm going to teach you how to cast glow. Yay! Glow! An orb of pure golden brightness. Uh, brightness flowers in the cusp of your palms. At first, it's faint and nebulous. With each beat of your heart, the light shines more and more radiantly. Zero! Zero, zero. Right. I did it. Spin around, delightful and fine. Zero watching me from one of those rare, sweet, wistful smiles on his face. Well done. Hehe. <laughs> I don't understand why, but seeing Zero's smile always makes me... Always makes something twist inside my heart. <laughs> Praise me. I did. I just did. Yeah. Yeah, okay, praise me more. Maybe. Maybe I will if you pass your exams, that is. Hmm. Work hard and do your best. Work hard, Faye. It all depends on you from here on out. The more I look at that smile, the more I find that secret hollow in my heart, twisting more sharply than usual. Turning away from him, I toss the glowing orb up into the quiet evening sky. Anyway. Now it's your turn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Come on! Come on. My glow must be feeling yeah, lonely there. Yeah, right. With the moon and all the stars keeping company? Well... You're so far away, Zero. You're right here. Quietly. So very quietly that I'm not sure I really did hear it. Soft whisper. All right. For you, Faye. Yeah! From behind me, an orb of Azula light floats past. Drifting up to join his golden counterpart. You know... What do those call them? Ghost lights. Will the wisps? Um. Hmm. Every poltergeist can cast the spell. Mm hmm. Malevolent ones can cast them before unwary travelers, using its light to lure them from the road and perish all quaking bogs and silent dark tarns. Uh. When darkness is all around you, something I did not read. <laughs> Somehow Zero's voice carries a hint of bitterness with it. I can't help but lean forward to try to put my ear on his shoulder. Hey! Hey. <laughs> Sorry. You know. You know better than that. Well... Can't help it. You're so... Oh, you're my reliable light. What? What? Don't you know? You're glowing blue poltergeist, who is always looking out for me. So you can't blame me for wanting to lean on my shoulder. You can't. Well, you can't. Fall right through and disrupt my form in the process. <laughs> Like just now, huh? I grin at him, but his smile is nowhere to be found. Although his cheeks seem tinged with a faint blush. So? We've learned how to cast glow. Our lesson is over. Heading off before you do something stupid again. Zero! Zero. He dematerializes in front of my eyes. Zero. Feeling a little crestfallen, I set off in the direction of my house. Before I'm about to leave the field, I pause and look back one last time. Two glowing orbs, bold and blue, are still adrift in the evening sky. The corners of my mouth curl upward. I continue my way, my steps lighter than before. I can make potions. Choose three potions 
you'd like to create and your assistant press start. Um, I would like to create a blue one. Wait, hold on, what do I need? Back. Okay, so I need a pink one, a red one, and a blue one. A blue. A red and a pink. We'll double my output. Be two additional potions. We'll output, we'll triple your potion output on your third choice. Three different potions. We will give you two random additional potions. So they're the same, three different. Double potions output. Triple output for the third choice. I'm gonna go with her. Two, one, one, one. Cool. Daddy da. Daddy da. Can't find my books. Daddy da. Must have stolen by crooks. Hmm. Probably left them in the bag you lent your roommate. Squirm roll. Protruding my lips and holding my chin in my hand as I think hard on mentally retracing my steps from not so earlier today. Wow! Oh, I did do that, huh? Hmm. Wait. Lulu. How did you get here? What? Loop. Watch yourself. It's Lawrence. L A W R E N C E. Watch yourself, witch. Lawrence takes a moment to pause and sniff the air. The way his nose twitches is way too adorable. Hmm. For next time, you have eggs and bacon. I'm coming to claim some for myself. How? How did you know all this? Creepy. No! It's not. He sighs and princes, pinches the bridge of his nose. Again. In case you forgot, again, I'm a werewolf. We have the best sense of smell in all of Halloween Town. This is Halloween. Now. I caught your scent near West Shop, but it was muddled with several people mingling there at once. Hmm. Since that Frankenstein creature came in not long after, you so easily gave them your bag without a second thought. I assumed you lived together. But. Although I can imagine you're doing something like that regardless. Wow! Wow, we do actually. That's some pretty impressive detective work. Hmm. Side is deceptive, but sense never lie. Oh. Hey, do you know where Damien is now? Help me! I wish I him down. I need my stuff for my next class. Do it yourself. Find them yourself. How? How am I supposed to do that? I throw my arms in a greatly exasperated manner and look at my werewolf companion with a huge pat on my face. Like Not everyone has all seeing an all knowing magic nose like you do. Well, well, did you ask me to teach you magic, didn't you? Um, yeah. I'll show you. Then buckle up, buttercup. I'll teach you how to follow a scent the way I can using a spell, a scent track. All right! I'm all ears. Giddily, I cup one hand behind each ear. Lawrence lets out a disgruntled tough. Pay attention. Ooh, pay attention. As I teach you how to cast scent track. New spell acquired. Lawrence demonstrates how I can smell the way wolves do. I thought it'd be complicated to improve my senses like that, but it's actually pretty simple. With the right spell, I can I guess anything is possible. Scent track! Scent track. After casting, I took a deep breath through my nose, as if it were a delicious brew cooking on the stovetop. Wow! Wow, it's like a whole new world opened up right before my very nose. Maybe. As long as you get a good whiff of it first, you could track just about anything. Maybe even feel, too. Dragon Field? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of running around. <laughs> I don't have the words right now to convey how terrible that pun was, but I'll track you down later. I grin as I lean toward him and take a few sniffs. Oh! <laughs> I love the little chibis that they have. Hey now, you actually smell kind of nice. <laughs> Sensational, even. What? Now. Now he's being creepy. Come on! Come on, you started it. What? I mean it though. You have a really earthy smell to you, like wildflowers and tree bark and mud. Well. I like rolling in puddles when no one is looking. <laughs> puddles, really? Hmm. You told me you roll around and see dead things too. With my mouth ajar, I slap both hands against my cheeks. 
Oh. Wait, is that why you work at the... We're yeah, done. We're done here. What? Leave. Oh. Okay. All right. Bye. Okay, okay, fine. Smell you later, Lawrence. <laughs> yeah! Fuck you! <laughs> Alright. There's spells. You know what? I think I'm just gonna go with this. Oh, blue is what we need for him. Like, hella blue. What about a screech to break the glass or deafen anything in range? Yes. I do that on the daily. Zero, I've been thinking. Well done. Splendid. <laughs> Will it be something I intend to do on a regular basis? <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> oh, but true. Right. Been around Halloween Town for ages, haven't you? Yes. You could say that. Well. Remember when we first met the night a century ago? When I was a snotty little kid? Why? Why the past tense, Faye? <laughs> And when I suddenly saw you glaring and hovering right in front of me, I burst into tears. I... I wasn't glaring, and I clearly remember apologizing. Repeatedly. Right! You did, you did. I stopped crying because it looked like I was scaring you. More than you were scaring me. I admit it. Not the most glorious highlight of my career as a poltergeist, I will admit. A snicker escapes my lips. Well... Pretty glorious to look back on now, though. Anyway... Anyway... Um... I probably know all kinds of things about Halloween Town. Hmm. Probably. Like? Such as the generations of students who attended Dormammu High. Yes. A school of long and distinguished history. And then? And the graduation exams that they take every Halloween. I see. Yes, I see what you're after now. Can you teach me? Teach me, Zero. Teach me a spell that will help me pass all the Halloween exams. Unfortunately... No such spell exists. That's how it is. Estella does a great job in changing the nature and layout of the exams each year. The obstacles she sets up are unpredictable, even to me. No way! Alas, alack, woe is me. But... However... Mm -hmm. One test I notice she is particularly fond of is a... Oh. Is to devise a monster that will try to obstruct the student. Oh, scary. What's the monster's weakness? Let me think. It's difficult to say. Mm-hmm. On well, some years, the monster she used is weak to fire, on others, weak to ice. Maybe. Some could even over... Oh, some can only be overcome by magic. Others had to be stopped by physical objects. Um... That is fairly unpredictable. In a great show of exasperation, I throw my hands up in the air and knock back my head. No way! There's no shortcut to passing, huh? Actually... But come to think of it, none of them are invulner invulnerable to noise. Break back up. Mm. Noise? Yes. I could teach you a whale. A spell that lets you emit a screech so loud it deafens and stuns anything within hearing range. Mm -hmm. It also temporarily blocks your ears, so you won't become part of the affected party. Hmm. Hellhounds, imps, harpies, even dragons. Hit any of them with whale at full blast. They'll need a minute or ten to regain their senses. Maybe. It could buy you a breathing room. You need to get away. Right! Sounds useful. Um... Wait, did you say dragons? Don't worry. Well, don't worry about that. The school made her stop using them on students after too many concerned parents complained. Pay attention. Now prepare yourself, Faye. I'm going to teach you how to cast whale. New spell acquired. Hmm... Eddie? Wait. One second. Your neighbors? Yes! Have been warmed and are all and are out walking their hellhounds. Mm -hmm. Damien? Yeah. Just taken off their ears. Hmm. Okay, good. Thero stops his ears with his fingers and scratches up his face. All right. Now. <laughs> Maybe the expression of excruciating pain on Zero's face. Well, is even more powerful than I ever imagined. Stop. Enough. Enough. Stop. Uh. I'm just starting to have fun. Stop it. Any louder and you'll cause nearby windows and mirrors to shatter. Think about it. Not to mention all those vials of potions you have stocked up. Wouldn't want to repurchase all of those for exams now, would you? No, no, no! Oh, no, no, no. Was it really that loud? Yes. You were. Be sure to use whale carefully and sparingly. 
Dr. Fultz? Huh. Zero Fultz's arms. And whatever. <laughs> Left to see the look on Estella's face when she finds out her precious monsters can all be beaten by someone screaming very, very loudly. <laughs> you know, Zero, I'm surprised you're on a first name basis with Miss Magwitch. She's so forbidding and severe to everyone. Because? That's because you haven't known her since the first day she arrived at Halloween Town. Lost and penniless and running away from Broken Heart. Um. Miss Magwitch, Broken Heart? How? Who? Why? When? Don't. I'm not going to gossip about your superiors. Practice the spell a couple more times when no one is nearby, obviously. And then? And when the day of reckoning comes, wail and watch Miss Magwitch's monsters flee in terror. Yeah! Yeah. Looking around the human shop, all I, oh, all I can see are couples that should be together. If only I could give them a nudge in the right direction. Hmm. This sucks. We have to work when there's such important higher calling. No, bad fay. I have to study. Look down to the open spell spell book, which still sits on the counter. Mr. West told me I could study here until someone comes to the register. And memorizing ingredients shouldn't be too hard. Right? Well... Let's see, pumpkin no- no no, pumpkin root. Mixed with cherry eye? What's that? Oh wait, this is walleye. Who decided that learning potions meant reading anyway? All you do is dump a bunch of junk in a pot. And you should be able to wing it. Yeah? What's the point of studying? They're both the same, aren't they? How am I supposed to pick? Lift my head and watch Carmia flirt, uh, flit between shelves. When she's first customer, there's a smile curling up on her face and a glint of something in her eye. She beelines toward him, then gently places a hand on his back. My dear. Oh dear, it's just packaged fingers. You know? Don't make the decision any harder than it has to be. They're both fine products. You'll notice that the one on the left is dried. Well, the one on the right is fresh. I'm sure! Still, I'm sure a capable mate just as yourself will use both to its fullest potential. Alright, I'll take both. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I knew you were something special when I first saw you, darling. Her hand slithers up the customer's back, then drapes around his shoulder. Carmia pulls in closer to him, and dark blush creeps up his neck as, he d as she does. But... You know. Well, you don't want to put your ingredients in just any, any old cauldron, do you? Am I wrong? You recently started carrying magical implements. And a miracle worker of my caliber deserves, of your caliber, deserves the best of the best. Or am I wrong? Alright, you have a point. Let's see, I'm making a... This continues for at least a good half hour. I'm absolutely mesmerized as I watch Carmia direct him around the shop. Whispering sweet suggestions into his ear. Eventually, I don't even see the customer's face behind the pile of goods in his arms. And as expected, it takes forever to ring everything up when they finally arrive at the counter. Thanks for your purchase! Thank you so much for your purchase, doll. Be a stranger, you hear? Of course not, Miss Carmilla. I'll be back next week. No, tomorrow! I'll never go anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you had remarkable taste. Thanks again. After the man pays. I watch, mouth hanging open as he stumbles off with half the store in tow. His sudden gentle presence at the bottom of my jaw is Carmia uh, closed it with her finger. My dear little witch. Oh, little witch. Don't tell me you're falling for me, too. No way! No way! But I think anyone who isn't as powerful as I am has been falling all over themselves by now. You were amazing. Lord. But that wasn't all just you, was it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's someone who really studies, you got keen intuition. You're right. Absolutely right. Indeed. He liked me just fine. But I may have given him just a teensy nudge. Right. A magical nudge, right? Correct! Correct. You know? Collaborate for you. I... My struggling employee. We, vampires, have a natural ability to enthrall and hypnotize mortals. Or the lesser undead at our leisure. A spell... You may refer to as enthralled. Now. If there is so much as a seed of potential for the feeling flourish, we can. 
smiling, she mines the balloon flower with both hands. Now... Which part, so to speak? Like... So you're saying you can instantly make anyone like you. Those possibilities soon rack my brain. Imagine what a distinguished matchmaker like me can do a spell like that. Not quite. Not quite, love. Now... You can't do anything at all against those with indomitable wills, such as yourself. Nor can we replace genuine feelings of friendship, or love either for that matter. And so... But enthrall makes friendships easy to imitate. So I can be a little nice about it. It makes the job and other things much easier after all. Wow! Wow. No wonder Mr. West has been singing your praises. <laughs> has he now? I suppose. I suppose I am his best saleswoman. But I just work here for fun, not like you, my dear. Yes! Yes, yes. It's super hard, Carmia. I wish I was even half as beautiful and talented as you. She straightens up, places a hand against her cheek, and turns away to hide in her cave's collar. Carmia's good at dishing out compliments, but she really doesn't take them, huh? Cute. Oh my. Oh my, I suppose you do have a little potential. Mm. Tell you what, you've been poring over those books for hours, so I'll give you a real lesson as a reward for your, for your flattery. All right! I'm at your disposal, my lady. You take an exaggerated bow and grin at her. You immediately claps both hands together. My dear. Oh, you're so cute that I can just eat you up. Just don't think I'll go easy on you because of that. Listen carefully. All right, listen carefully. I'm gonna teach you how to cast and throw. New spell acquired! Here to work. Carmia points out a page in your book with a potion of enthrallment. It steers me around the store so I can collect the ingredients myself. I think I learned better by doing things. It's easier to remember what everything is when I'm physically holding it, as well as being coached by someone else. Growing takes a while, so Carmia moves around helping out the customers. Still, she manages to check in on me now and again. At one point, she sees my progress and even nods in satisfaction. Well, that's everything. Now drink it all up, dear. That's the only way it'll work. I wrinkle my nose to the smell. Like two or three perfumes that should never mix. Still pour the potion down my throat. Enthrall! Enthrall. How do you feel? Kinda of tingly. Wonderful! Now... At least, that at least sounds correct for another being. I wait until someone comes in to... Hmm. Don't worry, I already have someone in mind. Shivy's grin slides across my lips as I call upstairs to Mr. West. Come on! Hey, Mr. West! This echoes through the shop. But it's still nothing like the one that booms back at me. What? Yes! I need a raise! Huh? No way, newbie. You just started here. Get back to work. Very confusing. And exasperated, I turn back to Carmia. Huh? Why didn't that work? <laughs> My poor sweet student. Practice! The very first time with Rawling. It takes significant oh. something that I did not read. Aw. Don't you worry. But don't worry. You're pretty little. Oh, but don't worry, you're pretty little head. One bit, my dear. Carmia gives me a few short pats on the top of my head. You know? The lovely Carmia would teach you all sorts of things. And you'll be rolling in dough in no time. How does that sound? Wow! Great. You really are the best, Carmia. Oh my. Oh my, oh my. I think I'm going to enjoy watching your progress, Faye. My dear little wit. Let's continue to work hard. Can't have you fail those exams, no? No. All right. I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here then. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully I will see you later.